Yes, Mr. Bernstein. How are you? I have a friend. Not too bad. I have a friend who has overstayed on her visa for more than one year. Right. Is it safe for she to travel domestically? Um, travel and what? Travel. Uh, like, from like state to state. Like yeah, I think. I, I listen. You want to be one hundred percent safe. Don't leave your house. Okay, Th then I could guarantee you you're a hundred percent safe. Can I tell you you're a hundred percent safe? You know, going through you know uh, security at the airport and getting on a plane and flying from one state to another. Uh, for, for, when I say safe, I mean from an immigration standpoint. Uh, most likely, you know, ninety nine point nine percent. But I have seen on occasion, I have seen on occasion, um, people get into a problem with immigration at airports. It does, it's not completely unheard of. But, you know, I also have heard people, you know, God forbid, get killed in car accidents. It's also not unheard of, but people get into cars and drive every day. Uh, people get run over crossing the street. People get hit by lightning. You know, all of those things happen, but you leave the house. So, you know, I don't want, I don't want you, I, I will say, yes, it's safe to fly, because the odds that anybody from immigration will bother you is almost nil, but I can't tell you 100%. I can tell you 99%. But I don't want you to be in that 1% that, that all of a sudden, you know, you said, hey, Mr. Bernstein, I called you on the radio, and you told me it was safe to fly, and look, now I'm calling you from jail. So, you know, best to stay home. Then. Best to stay home. You know, but if you are going to travel, but if you are going to travel, believe it or not, uh, airplanes are the safest, okay? Not only statistically that you're less likely to die, but also statistically, but also statistically that, that you're less likely to be bothered by immigration. So from both perspectives, uh, it's safer to fly on an airplane than it is uh, to drive. You know, when you drive, you know, especially uh, I've heard stories, people go up in, you know, up by Syracuse. And, um, you know, they have upstate New York, for example, or when you go down south, uh, the deputies are, are of, of the different sheriff's offices in many of rural areas, not so much in metropolitan areas, but more in the rural areas. Uh, they're deputized by the Immigration Service to go check people's uh, immigration documents. And there have been roadblocks in various places that people have gotten caught. They're also, there's a bus line and a train line that goes from New York to Chicago. And that bus line and train line that goes from New York to Chicago goes up by the border of Canada at some point in time. And I probably get at least a call a month from somebody either traveling on that bus or train line from Chicago to New York or New York to Chicago who, you know, immigration pulls over the train or pulls over the bus and starts looking for documents because it's going up by the border uh, and, and gets put in deportation. So, uh, as I said, statistically... Uh, Fly over bus or train. The safest is sit at, sit at home in your bunker. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All, right. All right. Okay. All right. Um, I'm calling regard to a friend of mine who came here. Um, that she came on the work program, the teachers' work program. Right. They've been here for about five years now. Mm -hmm. But they they came as a wife and husband. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going on? There's some separation between the two. Right. Where they're in process of getting divorced. Mm -hmm. Now, what she would like to find out is what options does she have in regard to getting her permanent stay here? They have, they've been going through the process of getting well, there. Who, 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 but who, it has not been finalized. Who, who's the teacher, the man or the woman? The man was the teacher. Okay, so she's, so she, well, if she gets divorced before she gets her green card, then she's got to go find a new way to become legal in the United States and will will need to get a green card on her own somehow. So, you know, she's okay. going to be just like anybody else whose visa is shortly about to expire and has got to figure it out. So what I would All suggest right. that she does is give me a call uh, at 1-800-522-0804 or I'll give you another. Go back to the husband and say, let's hold off on the divorce till I get my green card. I mean, we've, we've been together 10, 15 years, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to have some feelings for me. Absolutely. And, and at least, you know, everybody walks away happy, and it's at least a amicable separation rather than something that's something less than amicable. Um, I signed for my kids like five years ago, but they are over 21. Right. I'm a citizen here. I do the affidavit of support. I do the D. The D is two thirty, mm -hmm. and it, and fingerprints already. How long it will take from now? What's the priority date? 
Um, February 6th of 2000, February 6th, 2006. Uh, it's probably six, nine months away because the visa's retrogressed. Uh, but, you know, if you did all of that, uh, the whole file should be down in Jamaica or shortly be down in Jamaica. But I would say hopefully by year end they'll be here. But I, I call the National Visa Center. Mm -hmm. And what they told me, they told me that the case is closed already. They're just waiting like for a visa number. But I'm saying it's over five years now. How long when you file for kids over 21? Or, or what's, the, what's the total amount of years? It depends. There's, there's, no, there's no total amount. It depends. You know, it's, it's, they, they give 20-something thousand visas a year to kids. Mm -hmm. Okay? Year out, worldwide. So how many people have filed? How many people have filed before you? Which is why I always say file as quickly as possible. Yep. Okay. So maybe there's thirty thousand people who have filed with priority dates before you. They can only give twenty thousand out a year, which means they're going to give twenty thousand out this year, and then you'll be the following year. Okay. What happened was is they gave too many out at the beginning of the year, and they were going to be what's called oversubscribed, which means that they were on pace to give more than 20,000 out in one given year. So they retrogressed the numbers, they cut it back, they slowed it down so that at the end of the year they're at 20,000. The year ends, the government year ends September 30th. So come October 1st, a whole new set of 20,000 green cards should be coming available. Right. That's why I'm saying hopefully by year end when the new when the new 20,000 pop up on October 1st that you'll be your kids will be in that group. You understand? Okay. My question is, yes. um, I'm a niece living in the Cayman Islands, and um, she has her green card since she was seven years old, and now she's 17, and it's going to expire in June. What is the best way to do it? Do she have to apply for a renter permit, or... She, 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 be she, better, she, she better come to America now before she turns 18, re-enter with her green card. As a minor, they're not going to hold you. You know, they may give her a little hassle at the airport, but she, all she has to say is, listen, my parents sent me home. I'm now reaching the age majority. And I want to reside in the United States permanently. I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. I had no control over it until now. And let her come back, enter before she turns 18 with her green card, and then if she wants to live back in the Cayman Islands and not lose her green card, when she re-enters the United States, then you could apply for the re-entry permit. You can't apply for the re-entry permit outside of the United States. Okay, so the best way is let her come here. Let her come as soon as possible. She's going to college in the Cayman Islands right now. Right, right. So let her come up with her green card, before, mm -hmm. before, hopefully before she turns 18. When she comes here, then she'll apply for the re-entry permit, and then she won't have a problem. Um, I have a question. I came to the United States in uh, 2000. Right. And uh, I overstayed my visa. Mm -hmm. right. uh, my whole family is here. Half of them citizen, half of them are screen out. And in 2005, I applied to a business a labor condition certificate. I have uh, approved I-140, and uh, my I-485 was just denied because of uh, I over overstayed right, my you visa. Right, and you weren't grandfathered under 245I. When you say half your family is here, are your parents here? No, my parents are here. They have green cards. How did my they? How did? Have a citizen. Uh, how did your parents get their green cards? Uh, my brother is a citizen. He sponsored them. Okay. Well, your problem is is that you, you overstayed on your visa and you filed an adjustment based on a job sponsorship with a priority date after April 30th, 2001, when they were correct. If you overstayed, you have to be grandfathered under 245I. The only way you can adjust your status in the United States uh, without 245I as a visa overstay is if you marry a U.S. citizen, you are the parent no. of a U.S. citizen over the age of 21, and your, and your child is over the age of 21, or you are the child under 21. Other than that, you can't adjust your status. Now, unfortunately, what's going to happen with you is because you filed the adjustment and it got denied, you're going to be put in deportation now. So what I would suggest, what I would suggest that you do is you make an appointment to come see me Very immediately. Important. Right.